Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to take a quick look at some of the techniques that the guys in Polyphia use in their guitar playing. So we're going to look at certain techniques they use in their guitar playing. Uh, we're going to go over a few little tips and tricks that will hopefully help you develop this style of guitar playing faster. And then later on in the video we're going to talk about how you can apply some of these techniques that we talked about today to your own guitar playing. So make sure you stick around because today's video is all about how to play guitar like Polyphia. My name's Jack. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other videos here on YouTube, make sure you go check them out. I have a whole bunch of Polyphia and Tim Henson related content on my YouTube channel now. Um, so make sure you subscribe to keep up with future videos being posted. Also, if you want to learn that little Polyphia inspired riff that I just played, you can get the tabs and the backing track for it through the link in the description. So a few months ago, I posted a video that was titled How to Write a Riff Like Polyphia. My goal with that video was to basically go over some of the ways that you can approach writing a similar sounding riff to the guys in Polyphia um, and some of the techniques that they use when they're writing their own riffs. If you haven't checked that video out yet, I highly recommend that you do. Um, I'll put a link to it up in the top corner now. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to that one um, because we're going to be looking a little bit more specifically at how Polyphia approaches playing guitar as opposed to how they approach writing their music. First thing we're going to look at today before we get to any techniques or anything is um, we're going to look at how you can approach getting the right guitar tone for this kind of music. So let's talk a little bit about how you can approach getting a similar guitar tone to Polyphia. Obviously the easiest way to sound like Polyphia would be to get the neural DSP plugin that Tim put out, um, Archetype Tim Henson, but if you can't afford that, you've got a practice amp at home, then we can still make it work. So you want to start off on the clean channel on your amp. Um, if you've got a guitar like this one here with humbuckers, you want to be in the neck position and if you have the option to split it down, you want to coil split it. If you've got a guitar with single coils like a Strat, you want to make sure you're in the fourth pickup position um, because this is really going to give you that Polyphia signature sound. Next you just want to start off on the clean channel on your guitar amp. Um, that's the great thing about Polyphia's guitar tone is that it, a lot of their main riffing sort of tones is just on a clean channel. With the EQ on your amp, you might have to adjust this a little bit depending on how your amp sounds. Um, but to get that Polyphia sound, you normally want quite a lot of bass. So I normally leave my bass about three quarters of the way up, um, mids just past halfway and treble just past halfway as well. So with your EQ being set like this on your guitar amp, it should be making your guitar sound quite present um, and sound like it has a lot of mid attack to it. Next thing that we want to do is add some heavy compression to the guitar sound. If you have a compressor pedal that you can use, that's perfect. Um, if you don't, you can always run through Logic or GarageBand and use a compressor that way. Um, you should be able to achieve a very similar sound. Basically what we want the compressor pedal to do is to really drive that clean channel on the amp. So. Uh, when you really dig into the strings, you should be able to hear a little bit of grit in there. The other thing that a compressor will do is bring out the dynamics in your guitar playing. So if you're playing some notes that aren't quite as loud, they should be brought out to be a more consistent, even volume. And if your compressor has the option for it, um, you want to make sure the attack setting is set reasonably slow um, because this is going to make sure there's a nice transient coming through whenever you first strike a note. <laughs> The last couple of things we're going to do to achieve a similar guitar sound to Polyphia um, is we're going to add a little bit of chorus to the signal. You want to blend in a little bit of chorus with your clean tone uh, because this is going to make your guitar sound a little bit wider than it normally does and this is something that Polyphia do quite often with their guitar sounds. Finally, you want to add a little bit of reverb to your guitar sound um, just to give it a little bit more space and uh, to make it feel a little bit more comfortable when you're playing. Okay, so the first technique we're going to look at today is what I think is one of the most important techniques when you're trying to play guitar like Polyphia, um, and that's hybrid picking. Alright, so hybrid picking is a super useful technique that Polyphia use all over the place, um, especially in their newer songs like Playing God or basically anything off of New Levels, New Devils. Um, it's just a technique that they use all the time. So basically hybrid picking is when you play with a pick and your fingers at the same time. What you're going to do to achieve this is hold your pick between your thumb and your index finger and then you've got your other three fingers that you can hybrid pick with. 
this can be a little bit difficult to learn, um, especially at first. I know it was difficult for me to actually develop the skill to be able to do it properly. But what I'm going to do later on is just show you a couple little tricks that I found really, really useful for when I first started learning to hybrid pick. There's a couple of different reasons why Polyphia choose to use this technique in their playing. Um, so firstly, you don't have to move your hand nearly as much to play a lot of notes very quickly. If we just take a simple E minor chord, for example, so what I'm going to do is anchor my hand down at the bridge and just use the pick for the top three strings on the guitar and then hybrid pick the bottom three strings. So you can see my wrist is actually not making quite as much movement as what it would be if I was individually picking those notes. What this means is that you can play a large amount of notes very quickly across different strings, um, and you're really only using about half the movement in your wrist as what you would be if you were individually picking each note. The other reason why Polyphia use this technique in their playing um, is because it actually allows you to play a melody or a riff. but actually play the root notes underneath it at the same time. So let's take a look at the main riff from Goose, for example. Just looking at that very first part of the riff, we've got a root note, and then we're hybrid picking the very first note of the melody underneath it. And these are both the first starting notes of the riff. So we've got the root note and the first note of the melody together, and we're able to play those two together because we're using hybrid picking to achieve this. So then, obviously, after those first two notes, they continue on with the melody. And then we've got another chord here. So for them to be able to play this chord change, they're doing the exact same thing. Playing the root note with the pick, and then hybrid picking the next note of the melody underneath. And that's essentially what makes up that whole main riff in Goose. Um, so there's a lot of chords that are making up the actual phrasing of the riff, but they're playing a melody on top of it, and they'll be able to play both at the same time using the technique of hybrid picking. So I know for me, learning to hybrid pick was quite difficult at first, and it took me a little while to get it down properly. Um, but a couple of little tricks that really helped me get my head around it. So firstly, I tried to think of it in a very, very basic form. So if you think of it as your pick is playing the top three strings and your bottom three fingers are playing the bottom three strings. Just learning to do this, what I would do is just play chords, but try and think about it very, very simply. So my pick is playing the top three strings and bottom three strings are being played by my fingers. The other thing that was quite surprising to me that helped me learn to hybrid pick better um, was to actually look at the pick I was using. This is a Dunlop Sharp series pick. Um, these are what the guys in Polyphia use. They actually use the 1.14 version, which is the purple version. But the reason the guys in Polyphia use these picks is because they're very, very precise to play with. Um, and you actually get a little bit of extra height off of the string when you're using them just because they're a little bit longer at the end. What this means when you're hybrid picking is there's actually a little bit more space for your bottom three fingers to sit on the strings um, as opposed to if you're using a regular size pick. Um, so it just makes it a little bit more precise when you're trying to hybrid pick. Hopefully that's a couple of little tricks that'll really help you with your hybrid picking. So the next thing we're going to talk about to play a guitar more like Polyphia uh, is how they use sliding. So this is something that's very different depending on what era of the band you're trying to emulate. Um, but if we're being very general about it, they're really using sliding as a primary way of having a lot of melodic phrasing in their playing. Sliding a note up or down a guitar is very similar to how a vocalist would do like a vocal run or sing a melody. Um, and I think that this is something that the guys in Polyphia are very aware of when they're playing. There's a lot of examples I could give for this one, but basically if you look at any hook or chorus sections in their music, you'll notice a lot of what makes it really catchy and melodic is they're sliding a lot of notes around much in the same way a vocalist would do with their voice. If we look at the main hook from Euphoria, for example. <laughs> There's so much sliding in that one hook line, and this is very much on purpose, I think, because you can very easily walk away after listening to that song and be able to sing that melody back to yourself. The other thing you'll notice when you're listening to their newer music, um, 
Polyphia don't do a lot of bending in their playing. And of course, we've all heard Tim talking about the phrase boomer bends with Rick Beato, um, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because these guys are drawing inspiration from a lot of pop and hip hop music, um, which usually features quite linear notes and phrasing in the production style. So it makes sense that they don't feature a lot of bending in the guitar playing. I would say if you're wanting to play guitar in the style of Polyphia's newer music, use a lot of linear note phrasing and try to reduce the amount of bending in your playing. Another technique that Polyphia will often use in their playing is harmonics. So we're not going to go too in depth on this technique because I think most of you watching this probably have a decent understanding of how harmonics work and all that. Um, but basically there's, there's certain frets on the guitar where if you can hover your finger lightly over the string without pressing down, um, you can get a note. What Polyphia do with this in their playing is they'll quite often use harmonics as a way of phrasing certain parts slightly differently. Harmonics are quite often an octave or so higher than the rest of the notes in the part that they're playing. Uh, so by adding a few harmonic notes to a part, it can keep their playing sounding really interesting and sometimes save parts from being a little bit too predictable. If we just look at the very first part from playing God, we've got that phrase. If we were to play that part without the harmonic notes in there, it'd sound like this doesn't quite have the same effect as those higher notes being in there. There's just something about those higher notes just coming out of nowhere, and they're, they're very close to where they're playing those initial few notes in the riff, but they're just getting a slightly different sound by using harmonics without having to make too much of a jump at the neck. Um, it just really kind of grabs your attention. Those higher harmonic notes that have been put in there, um, they kind of just catch you off guard a little bit at the very beginning of the song and you kind of immediately know like, oh, this is going to be really interesting guitar playing. So this next technique is another one that I briefly touched on in the video where we talked about how to write a riff in the style of Polyphia. Um, and that technique is where they place triplets in their playing. If we look at the main riff from Goose again, there's a triplet phrase at the very beginning. <laughs> So what the triplet in this riff is basically doing is it's catching the listener off guard a little bit because they're hearing a slightly different rhythmic pattern to what they've heard so far throughout the rest of the riff. And then later on in the riff they play this phrase. So this triplet at the end of the riff here has been played a lot faster than the first one. Um, and it's been placed at this part of the riff because up until this point we haven't heard that rhythmic phrasing before. So it catches you off guard again. So essentially Polyphia use triplets in their playing to change up the rhythmic phrasing of a part to give you something fresh to listen to. Okay, so this last technique we're going to talk about that Polyphia uses a lot is whammy tricks. This is probably the one that's most fun to play around with because there's so many cool sounds you can make with whammy bars or trim systems. And again, this is a technique that Polyphia will often use um, to keep the listeners' attention and keep their music from sounding too predictable. I also think that it's partly just because whammy bars are a lot of fun to use, um, but adding a random dive bomb or whammy flutter or something like that to a riff can really grab somebody's attention. I've noticed myself that what Tim will do in his own playing is he'll use it like a whammy flutter or something, but he'll use it in a really rhythmic way that doesn't really take away from the riff. Just recently I posted a cover of Tim's part in, in the cut, and one of the parts that really stood out to me was this phrase. What was really interesting to me about this is he's using a whammy flutter, but it's not necessarily taking away from the riff. He's keeping the same rhythmic pattern that he's already got going, in the way that he's playing the flutter. So he's just going like So he's using the whammy bar in quite a rhythmic way here. So he's hitting it in time with the song. Um, so he's not necessarily taking away from what he's playing, but he's just accentuating it in a really different way that's kind of, again, just catching you off guard and making you go like, oh, that's interesting. And obviously there's a lot of other whammy tricks they use in their songs that have been talked about a lot, or you can very easily learn how to do yourself. But I just thought that was a really creative way of using the whammy flutter technique, uh, but not necessarily taking away from what he was playing. And it's actually quite a personal trait to the way that Tim plays guitar. So that's another technique that Polyphia use in their playing that you can use to sound more like Polyphia. 
Okay, so we've covered a lot of information in this video so far, and you might be sitting there thinking like, okay, this is cool, but how do I apply this to my own guitar playing? So what I would suggest doing to incorporate these techniques into your own guitar playing um, is a couple of things. Firstly, it's really gonna help if you try to learn as many riffs by Polyphia as possible. What this will do is it'll give you a really good understanding of how you can apply these techniques that we've just talked about throughout this whole video um, to your own guitar playing and teach you how Polyphia uses it in their music because there's no better way to learn how to play like another artist than to learn from the artists themselves. And you can essentially do this by learning loads of the music that they've written. What will happen over time is um, you'll learn to recognize certain tendencies in that guitarist playing. Um, so you'll, you'll learn certain phrases that they like to go to or little default patterns that they'll go back to or certain scale shapes even. Um, and this is really getting into the mindset of how a guitarist is approaching playing guitar the way that they do. Personally, I don't believe there's a better way to learn how to play guitar like another guitarist um, than just learning heaps of their music and learning how they use these techniques we've just talked about in their playing. The second thing you can do is to try writing riffs based around these techniques we've just talked about. Maybe try combining a few of these techniques even. So um, maybe start with like harmonics played in a triplet pattern while you're high rip picking them or something like that. Just try out different things using these techniques and see what you like the sound of or see what you think sounds the most like what Polyphia would play. And the third thing that you can do is you can try incorporating these techniques that we talked about today into pieces of music that you've already written. What this will do is it will teach you to look at the parts you've already written differently and hopefully it'll broaden the range of ideas that you have when it comes to your own guitar playing. Okay, so hopefully you've learned something from this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to keep up with future videos being posted. Also, don't forget, um, if you want to learn that riff I played at the start of the video, you can get the tabs and the backing track for it through the link in the description. Sweet, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, hopefully you found it helpful in some way, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.